you're going to have some ankle and injuries with volleyball, not a, but more often with tennis because of how quickly you are stopping. We call it emergency moves where, you know, you're running one direction and all of a sudden the immediate stop, change in direction. Very common to roll an ankle, very common to, you know, with falls. Whereas volleyball, you are definitely having impact with the floor when you dive for a ball. Um, and so that's where you're going to get your knee problems. Your And again, you can roll roll the ankle as, as you can in anything. But both very, very safe sports. Uh, we're not looking for a lot of head injury with these that we've been talking about for a long time now. Other than if you're hitting yourself over the head with your racket well, after, after that a I play. Well, I can't help you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I noticed we, I went to the, there was a women's NCAA volleyball championship yes. that was here in Kansas City last year, and I went to yes. that, and I noticed that every one of the women that were participating in that had ankle braces on for, you know, to help them with the jumps and the pivoting and things like that. You really can't wear something like that in, in tennis, though, because that would inhibit your, your movement, I would think. Yes, and, and I've... Although I they wear them in basketball. I have a lot yeah. of athletes that their coaches tell them to wear the ankle brace, even if they have no injury, just on purpose. Pre uh, preventative. Yeah. And um, if they're only wearing it during the actual game, I think that's a, a good idea. But if, or a, you know, if they're wearing it all the time, though, then that prevents the muscle from actually developing as much as it could. Really? So you don't want to do it too much. You want to do it when you actually maybe are going to stress it and that kind of stuff. And it does help when you have all-day tournaments mm -hmm. uh, and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. The You can get shoes, of course, that are lightweight, have great arch support, and a lot of ankle protection. Mm -hmm. I would actually think that is a better way to go. Really? Um, because anytime you immobilize a joint, even they've done studies that within 15 minutes of immobilizing a joint, you are going to get inflammation starting. So really? this is not a great idea wow. to just put it on and wear it all the time because it creates more inflammation. It stops you, again, from strengthening that joint and the muscles around it and the ligaments and everything else. So, you know, I'm not opposed to it right. when you are in that situation. And especially I've had, I've had athletes that it does help the fatigue problem mm -hmm. during the all-day tournament. Mm -hmm. Of course... If they're in the all-day tournament, that means they're winning, you know, because they have to keep playing. So these are... So they better be in shape anyway. So, well, they, so yes, we're hoping that they're doing pretty well anyway. So so that's, uh, that is a way to look at it is, and but take it off between games, right. you know, give increased circulation, move the joint between games. Uh, different things like that. Put on your house slippers, just kind of kick back and relax, <laughs> you know. I don't think that's probably going to fly too well. Yeah, but, you know, I, don't, you know, I don't know. Young girls, it, <laughs> you know, it, it might, you know. I mean, you never can. They no. wear them to school. So. Well, that's, that's true. Um, so with tennis, there's, you know, the, the the good thing is with it is it is a whole body yes. sport. Absolutely. Uh, that it works your whole body. The bad thing is that it works your whole body too because right. you can suffer injuries from you know, a neck, neck that, on down kind sure. of. Sure. So. A lot of that comes if, if you're playing a lot. Really? Um, it, then it, it becomes a, you're becoming stronger on one side because you're always mm. using your dominant mm -hmm. hand. Mm -hmm. So again, in your backhand, you're going to support it. You're going to use both hands for some of that. Um, the best thing you can do then is weight training and especially focus on balance, uh, muscle balance. So we can do some testing where you do, we, we do grip strength on both sides you do muscle development on both sides. Uh, you want to see where you're at. And so, you know, you can evaluate that just to find out how you're doing and how much have you ever developed one side, which then those muscles then pull the vertebrae out to that side. They do all different kinds of things. And, and that's partially where you can help as well, just absolutely. by keeping things in line yes. you know, as and a so chiropractor. That's where weight and, and weight training to strengthen that opposite side. And right. also focus on not just using the one hand because then you that's where you're going to get that overuse injury. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're suggesting an, being an ambidextrous well, tennis player? Well, if you player. can be. I, I haven't being a switch hitter. that out. <laughs> 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 in tennis. I, I don't know why somebody hasn't tried that. <laughs> that's it. Well, we're just... we. Most of us are so dominant oh, on yeah. one side that oh, it yeah. is difficult to do it. So to be your 
best, it's it's hard to do the other one. But the th one of the things you mentioned in your article is um, obviously foot injuries that yes. are related to it. But you mentioned toes too. What, yes. Um, well, because they jam into the front of the shoe if when you're changing direction, and everything. Mm -hmm. So you want a well-fitting shoe with enough toe room. If the toe is too, if it's too jammed in the box, um, you definitely are going to have again. Just think of it as jamming every single time you stop. And so you want enough room for that to move around. Because you're really starting by pushing off with the toes, you're right? Stopping and starting. Yeah. So you've got yeah. it's you're you're moving it one direction in the shoe and then the other direction in the shoe. So it needs to be a very snug fitting shoe. Right. Um so that you don't have a lot of slippage. Right. But while while we do want it to be snug, we don't want it to be so tight in the toe box that you don't have room for, for movement. Right. Because you'll get a lot of jamming injuries there callus injuries uh, where you build up is that over time turf turf toe is that kind of that it's like a is turf that toe like is a, a hyper extension it's, it's not like, it's yeah. like a jam finger it's something different than it's that? a bit more like a jam finger than turf toe turf toe is a super hyper extension okay and stuff where it's okay. actually a torn ligament at oh, this okay. point and it becomes uh excessive you know it's very um immediately painful mm -hmm. whereas most of these are going to be more gradual onset. Mm -hmm. So there's a different, uh, you know, whereas the one, while it happens immediately, it becomes a chronic injury because we don't ever have enough time to heal. This also doesn't usually have enough downtime to heal, but it is, um, it comes on slowly. So you can deal, if you deal with it early, you can really manage it. Whereas if you wait too long, it becomes another difficult chronic problem right. to deal with. Okay, so... Tennis elbow. Uh, tennis elbow what, what is most we, we all know about it. You yeah. make jokes about it, all that kind of stuff. Sure. Um, it is when you continually swing, and so you are having um, the impact from the long lever of the arm, and then you add another foot and a half on the racket. Mm -hmm. So you get a long lever that is now stressing the joint. Mm -hmm. And so every time you do that, it pulls on the ligament, pulls on the ligament. But what happens a lot of times is it just, there's two bones that meet one bone. So in the upper arm, there's only one bone. In the bottom, there's two bones. And so they actually misalign. And okay. when they misalign, now they uh, the biomechanics are bad, and so it's rubbing uh, tendons and everything mm -hmm. tend to have more stress placed on them. And so what we do is we line them up. Also, we want you to ice after you've played to reduce that whatever inflammation is there. We might use other ways to bring down inflammation. Um, but the biggest problem really is let's get it lined back up so that right. it's working and functioning properly. And of course, the harder you hit, uh, the more it more is. More impacted. And yeah. And